friends i am going to discuss today a very important topic which is of great importance to the physicians as well as cardiologist this is the management of uh, heart failure and uh, uh, the specific drug i will be discussing will be arni that is segubitril uh, well certain combination uh, because uh, this is a medicine which has changed the management of uh, heart failure significantly in the last about 15 years as you know there have been several landmark trials uh, several landmark uh, uh, molecules which have really been developed in the last few years which have changed our medical practice and arni is one of them it has revolutionized the treatment of uh, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction as well as heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and uh, there was a national consensus on that and i'll be highlighting some of those points here it's a serious disease as you know that uh, heart failure can be deadlier than many cancers it has been shown that in ladies it's much worse than breast cancer uh, it's much worse than hodgkins lymphoma non hodgkins lymphoma colon and uh, rectal cancer and also leukemias because the mortality is 48% as compared to much less mortality this so it's a very very serious disease and uh, the problem is that in spite of all the advances this disease is increasing uh, because we are taking care of the patients of coronary artery disease valvular well, disease much better but the end result is heart failure and uh, this is a very deadly disease uh it is also a disease which is a progressive condition with high mortality not only it reduces the uh, uh quality of life the quality of life deteriorates but this uh, goes on recurring this means repeated admissions are there and there is nothing called as a stable heart failure uh, even when we call stable heart failure many of these patients need readmission and as the readmissions occur the mortality goes on increasing so this is a progressive condition with high mortality and we have to check this uh, progress as you all know heart failure patients are at very high risk of death and hospitalization and 9 out of 10 patients are symptomatic even with the, the current uh, medications and all and nearly one third of the patients with heart failure reduced ejection fraction are at high risk of hospitalization and cv death including those who appear stable so 33% can be readmitted again and each readmission increase the mortality for example after the uh, first heart failure admission the uh, survival is 2.6 and after the fourth it is reduced to half 1.3 so repeated admissions means uh, a more mortality and also this is a condition which is really uh, quite serious well yes it seems that uh, heart failure in indian is quite different if you see the global age of patient with heart failure is 73 years in india it's 53 years so we are having 20 years younger population in hospital mortality in global is about 3.8 and very very high in our country as uh, 30.8% of course it varies 20 to 30% but this is according to one of the publications 10 times higher so the patients are being managed very very poorly and that's why i think uh, the importance of this uh, uh, lecture is there and post discharge mortality uh, in our country is 26 as against 8% so it is 3 to 4 times more so it is occurs at a younger age it has very high mortality and uh, the post discharge mortality is also very very high so we need to really improve our treatment so this is the summary of uh, heart failure in indian patients and it has been calculated there are at least 8 to 10 million patients with heart failure in india there may be more but this is just a rough estimate prevalence is about 1% of adult population heart failure in india has a post admission mortality of 20 to 30% as i showed you medication adherence this is a very sad thing range is only 25 to 50% now there are drugs uh, which have been shown to reduce the mortality significantly but our adherence is very very poor so i think this is a very important lesson to be learned from the doctors that 
we have to improve the so-called uh, optimal medical therapy or uh, guideline-based medical therapy has to be continued. It's only 25% of the country. And uh, India has a relatively young population of heart failure. So uh, our morbidity is much higher. Incidence of diabetes in heart failure patients uh, in uh, one of the Indian studies is very, very high, much more than other countries. It's 54.9%. As you know, we are diabetic capital. And hypertension is also much more common. So these are the differences in Indian population. But I think the saddest part is that the adherence to the medicines which are available easily in our country is very, very poor, only 25%. So guideline-directed medical therapy is really poor, which can increase. And these are the key points from the Trivandrum Heart Failure Registry. This is from India, that three out of every five patients have died during the five-year follow-up with median survival of only three years in this young cohort of heart failure patients. There's a lack of guideline-directed medical therapy in patients with reduced ejection fraction, and frequent admissions are associated with higher five-year mortality, as I have shown you. Only 25% of the patients are discharged on uh, guideline-directed medical therapy. And those who are given guideline medical therapy, they have a better survival. So I think we must remember that uh, this guideline medical therapy, we should try to ensure in our patients because it can reduce the patients uh, uh, significantly. So there should be interventions aimed at increasing guideline-directed medical therapy may improve the outcomes in India. And uh, the physicians, all of us have a great role in that. Now, what are the goals of therapy in heart failure? The first goal is that we should increase the survival. As this is a disease which is a very, very high mortality, there were hardly any drugs which could increase the survival. But uh, in the last few years, there have been several drugs developed. You know that uh, uh, beta blockers were developed and they have been shown to uh, improve the survival. Then ACE inhibitors, ARBs also were shown to increase the MRAs also were shown to increase the survival and all. But uh, there was no progress in the last 15 years. 1999 was the last that uh, we saw the advances in uh, uh, medical treatment of heart failure. But uh, it's only in 2014 that another drug came called ARNI, which has really uh, changed the uh, outlook of survival in patients. So ARNI is another drug which has been shown to uh, decrease uh, uh, decrease the uh, mortality significantly, much more than the three drugs that we knew for a long period of time, because uh, the mortality remained very high even in spite of those three drugs being used. And recently, as you know, that SGLT2 have also been added. So we have the four pillars of uh, therapy of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. That is beta blockers, the ARNI, which is very, very important, the MRAs, and uh, now we have the SGLT2, and all four drugs should be used simultaneously because they have additive effects. But uh, I think we are going to talk about the strongest pillar of the therapy, and that is ARNI, because that has really changed the outlook of management of uh, uh, heart failure with reduced section fraction. So the other aim is, uh, apart from decreasing mortality, is to reduce the hospital admissions. So as I said, hospital admissions uh, uh, increase the mortality apart from the fact that uh, they also cause a lot of uh, uh, sort of harm to the patients, uh, discomfort to the patient, they should be reduced. That should be the other aim. And the quality of life should be better because quality of life of these patients is markedly reduced. So any drug should have all these uh, three features in them. And as I said, there are four drugs available, which do all of them. But uh, we are going to talk about uh, the strongest pillar and that is uh, the ARNI, the combination of Secubitrel and uh, Wellsart. Well, this is the study which really changed the outlook. This is a paradigm heart failure study. All of you are aware of this, and this has really changed the paradigm of management of heart failure. This was a study in which uh, uh, a large number of patients from all over the world, more than 8,000 patients, were randomized to either uh, uh, ACE inhibitors and Elapril in a dose uh, which is supposed to be ideal 10 milligram twice a day, which we hardly use, and ARNI in a dose of 200 milligram twice a day. They were uh, randomized, and this uh, was a huge study, which included patients from India also. So this is a, 
uh, throughout the world uh, study, and this is applicable everywhere. And this was followed for about 27 months. And you see the results. Uh, the results were extremely uh, uh, encouraging. It showed that uh, cardiovascular deaths decreased by 20%, more than uh, the ACE inhibitor, which was supposed to be also extremely good for management. So it was uh, better than uh, uh, ACE inhibitors, which we have been using for a long period of time. 20% less uh, cardiovascular death, a huge reduction. Hospitalization also decreased by 20%, much more than the, uh, the best ACE inhibitors that we know of. And overall mortality reduced by 16%. So it fulfilled all the three aims of management of uh, heart failure. That is, we have to decrease the uh, mortality. We have to improve the uh, quality of life and we have to decrease the hospitalization. And uh, surprisingly, the heart failure deaths were reduced uh, significantly uh, by 21%. And even sudden deaths was reduced by 20%. That was surprising because uh, uh, drugs like... Uh, uh, Beta blockers were known to decrease sudden mortality, but these drugs may also have some effect on the uh, ventricle fibrillation, et cetera. And uh, this uh, benefits were seen in patients with or without ICD also. And uh, if we have such results now, it has been shown that if we use this drug, many of these patients who are needing these uh, assist devices may not really need it. So this was very remarkable results. And that's why Seeing this uh, huge study, uh, it became the favorite drug in all guidelines to uh, treat uh, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And what about the uh, quality of life? What about the symptomatology? There was a significant improvement in the symptomatology also, as you see, as compared to the uh, uh, ACE inhibitor, uh, the patients who became asymptomatic were markedly increased from 8.6 to 32%. Uh, uh, by this drug. And uh, in class two, of course, uh, it reduced to 73 to 58%. And uh, class four also markedly reduced. This was in uh, uh, in comparison to the uh, uh, ACE inhibitor, that is NLFH. So there's a marked improvement in quality of life, uh, indicating that the symptoms are improved in this uh, drug also.